But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Love all those songs, but especially that last one, Jesus Saves. <clears throat> that says it all. Absolutely it all. Go back to that, no matter what question, no matter what answer you're looking for, it's found in Jesus Saves. <clears throat> You'll turn your Bibles to 1 Kings. 1 Kings. And today I want to speak about love acknowledges strength in adversity. Love acknowledges strength in adversity. And reading this sign about love that I'm working my way down line by line, I want to be more respectful of love itself, just love. Now it's God because God is love, but think of God, love, and not just the people it travels through. I want to embrace its peace, applaud its creativity, and thank its tenderness. I want to admire the bravery of love's open and willing hand, and now today acknowledge the strength the adversity. And when we realize that we have an adversity in our life, there's strength there. And why is there strength there? Because of God's love there. So start with God loves, period. God loves. And He gives you strength for adversity. And you're going to end up with more strength of God's love. So a saying is, if there's no test, there's no testimony. The Melchizedek Motorcycle Club has the saying, no cross, no crown. It costs them to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they know that. And just quickly reflecting last week's message, before the pastor got sidetracked and about halfway through, there's no education like adversity. Out of adversity comes opportunity. Adversity does not build character, it reveals it. So love acknowledges the strength in the face of adversity in your life. And strength is showing the courage in the face of adversity. And adversity is any unfavorable fortune or fate, a condition marked by misfortune or challenge in your life. So are you being challenged? Do you have challenges? And when you have them... That love, God's love, will strengthen you to see you through them. We can learn the stories in the Bible, but what's the reason? Why do we listen or learn or teach about Noah building the ark because God then blessed, or Elisha digging ditches and God watering them, or Moses smiting the waters and separating them, or the Israelites walking around the wall and Israelite walls, falling, Jericho falling down? Or Peter walking on the water. See, if you want to walk on the water, you have to get out of the boat. Otherwise, what they're saying is God showed them something, and then they had adversity. They had to obey God, and there is always a challenge in doing so. And when we realize that, that it's always marked by a challenge, there's strength in that because God is with you in that challenge. So if you want to experience the supernatural, you have to attempt something that's beyond your natural. If you want to hear God and then obey God, God will be with you and He will strengthen you in that conflict. When we realize that we acknowledge strength and adversity, we don't have to run from it. Now one of the things I want to share, I want you to get understand this, is when I say that, uh, and this is building up to next week's message, when I say, I've got a word of knowledge and I ring the bell, people, you should listen to that. If you don't hear anything else, you need to hear that word of knowledge. Because either I'm hearing God, or I'm not hearing God. If I'm not hearing God, go somewhere else. But if I am hearing God, that should say something to you. There, there, you know, I have different words of knowledge in the handout. Maybe one doesn't minister, but one should minister. 
And a couple weeks ago, and last week as well, I said, share what God is showing. Something very simple, a word of knowledge. Share what God is showing. Now, it doesn't have to be walking on water and, and building the ark and on and on. No, just share what God is showing you. God encouraged you to call somebody. You called, and they said, oh my goodness, I needed that. Thanks a lot. God showed you something. Share it. See, that's a word of knowledge. And if you keep that in your mind, and you walk with that all week long, just those little words, share what God is showing, then you'll grow spiritually. All of a sudden, you'll be aware, wait a minute, God was with me, God is with me, look how God ministered to me to minister through me. And that's what God does. He ministers to us to minister through us. And so, I said last week, if you listen, He will speak. And I talked about examining, defining moments and life symbols and trophies. And I mentioned all of your pictures that you keep. That's a life symbol. There, there's something in those pictures that minister life to you. And all through Scripture we have that. I mentioned last week about David keeping the sword and the spear of Goliath after he killed. Well, wouldn't that be what a symbol that is? But what are the symbols in your life? How about the symbols of a wedding ring? What does that mean to you? Oh, that goes deep. Oh, that, that ring, you know, it's, it's like that's a symbol and, and God has made us to honor symbols and to need symbols. So I'm looking at Elisha today in 1 Kings. Now the story of Elijah, I mean, the story of Elijah is King A, uh, he challenges King Ahab and Jezebel's hundred, uh, 450 prophets. And they're out there, and, and they want to uh, have these prophets. Uh, uh, he's, he's challenging them. You call down your God and, and, and burn up the, all the sacrifice, the bulls, and, and, and not only the wood, uh, he poured water on. And, water, and, and he said, now you go ahead and call your God, and let's see who has a stronger God, yours or mine. And so they yelled and screamed, and they cut themselves, and he starts mocking them and saying, yell louder, cut yourself more, maybe your God's asleep, maybe he's on vacation, and, and so they exhaust themselves, and then he stands back and he calls the Lord God, and the Lord God sends lightning and burns it all up, and, and Elijah says, catch all 450 and put them to death. Now, Jezebel heard, heard that, King Ahab heard that, and he got furious. And Jezebel said, now, now here's where we start in. Jezebel finds out about it. He, she is furious. Verse 19, or chapter 19, verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah has done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Now here comes the threat. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying... So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I don't make thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. Otherwise, Eli uh, Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you just like you killed the prophets. Now what we have here, and we need to understand that this, after every, it can be a positive, but generally after every negative threat, there's escalation. And then after escalation, there's a decline emotionally and intellectually, or even a depression. But, but then there's a balance out, and we're back to the, the lifeline that we were living. And so what you learn here, and this is, this is where psychology is proven. See, psychology, say, well, we came up with this idea. No, it's in the Bible. All proper psychology is found in Scripture. So what happens? Elijah has a high. He kills, he, he, God burns up every, he's on a high. Not only he's on a high, he says, catch 450 and kill them all. He kills them all. I mean, he's a man of the hour with God. And after that, things are calming down and Jezebel hears it and says, I'm going to kill you. And now he's on a escalated, he's escalating and after that comes depression. In our life, when we've been challenged, often we can be on a high... Matter of fact, most ministers will take Monday or Tuesday off, and they take Mon Tuesday off generally because Monday they're still on a high from Sunday with the Holy Spirit. And then they're coming down on a Monday, but they're still wrapped up, and come Tuesday they're finally leveling back out. 
And that's why most, many ministers take Tuesdays off. It's a biblical truth. Well, how about in your life when you're on a real high and, and then all of a sudden you come down? And if you go too high, you need to discipline yourself. Don't skyrocket because the higher you go, the farther you fall afterwards. Emotionally, physically, you're exhausted. So understand, I'm on a high, this is really good, this is good, but don't make it fantastic, great, you know, don't, don't escalate yourself anymore because you're going to have to come back down. Have a good high, but also know, now I'm going to come down, but I'm going to level off. But if it's negative, you escalate out of defense, uh, and then you're, you're exhausted emotionally, psychologically, or whatever, and, and then you often can get depressed. Well, why would you be depressed on Monday if you've just had a high on Sunday? Because you've emotionally come down spiritually or physically if the threat is there. So when we look at that, we see that depression will often follow. But what happens once they balance out? See, Elijah was depressed and now he's balancing out and he's going to be delivered. Now we look at verse 4. Verse 4 is a real key. But he himself went a day's journey, this is Elijah, into the wilderness and came and sat down by a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough, O Lord, take away my life. Am I not better than my father's? Now people, there's again, psychology. When you're depressed, don't isolate yourself. Don't say it's only me. I'm the only one. You see that? Verse 4 that's what we do. That's where psychology got their truth. So what happens, there's a threat in our life, there's a, there's a challenge in our life, and then we get depressed and we isolate ourselves and we think we're the only ones. Now, first of all, we're going to see the steps leading there, but God's going to say, Elijah, there's 7,000 others that haven't bowed their knee to Baal either, so get back in the city where you belong. Otherwise, get back with other people. But what we see, first of all, is God ministering. And when we see that, that God is ministering, God lets us rest. He then feeds us. He encourages us. And He tells us to get with other company and watch the blessings. And so that's like the suicide hotline. If you call the suicide hotline, they're going to tell you that. Uh, they're not going to tell you what, what, what they're saying, but <clears throat> they'll say, Are you alone? because they know that you need to be, have somebody. Uh, do you have anything to eat right now? Anything like, like an orange or a banana or something sweet? Can you, can you have something to eat? Uh, <clears throat> can somebody come and visit you, be with you before we hang up? Uh, will, <clears throat> can you take a nap? Can you get some sleep? And, and can you get back with others tomorrow? Because often it happens at night when they feel isolated and alone. And what are these five steps? <clears throat> They're taken right out of Scripture. That's where the psychology comes from. God made it all. He knows how we work. He knows what's good for us. He knows what's bad for us. He knows how to balance us out. God knows to how to bless us. So in <clears throat> Elijah's case, he was expecting to see God in lightning and thunder and, and the rumble of the earth, but God wasn't there. And then God came in a still, small voice. And how many times in our life will we go through that ups and down, that roller coaster, and then there's a still, small voice that encourages us. Still, small voice that says what way to go or who to call or what to say. And so you can either choose to have courage or you can choose to have comfort, but you cannot have both. See, the rock is where Elijah was isolated. He was lonely and, uncertainty, and uncertain, but that's where trust was tempered. That's where his faith was forged when he realized, wait a minute, yeah, all that good and exciting things happened, but now I'm alone and God is still with me. So acknowledge where strength is found in adversity. And people learn this and know this. Whether you're on a high, whether you're on a low, whether you're with other people or all by yourself, you are never alone never alone. And the lie that Elijah was saying to himself, a man of God, just proven that. All of a sudden, it's only me. No, it's not only you. There's the voice of God. Always listen for the voice of God. So there's where Elijah discovered what it meant to give God his unbridled attention. 
unbridled attention. It's where God met Elijah and where Elijah met God in a whole new way. People, meeting God is personal. Meeting God is where God will minister His will for you and your life. Now, tough and isolated times will do that. See, where have you been when you had to man up? as the saying goes. When you had a self-examination, you had, to, you had to say, who am I? And where am I? And where's God? See, that's where Elijah needed to be for the moment. He needed to get away from it all. It's there that he discovered the dream and the encounter and the voice of God, the encouragement. See, it's all about God and God's will for you and your life. And God will always, always, always minister to you. And as he ministers to you, he will minister through you. This morning, Sunday school, what was the gift of your scar or the gift of your challenge that you had? God will minister truth to you to support you, to heal you, to strengthen you, to God, on and on and on, in order for you to realize, wait a minute, that was God. And then you share with other Christians, here's what God showed me, here's what God did for me. And other Christians will then say, well, wait a minute, if God will do that for you, then God will do that for me. And why? Because, you know, we're, we're, we're in the family of God. He's the same God, we're the same family. So share what God has shown you. It's a blessing to other people. And so when we are isolated and we hear God and obey, it affects every decision we make. Every decision, every indecision has a ripple effect beyond our prediction. Every cause has an effect. The effect has a cumulative effect. So how you perceive and live your life, it's who you are. When God has shown you a truth, share it to others. It's who you are. So that's just the way you think. That's just the way you respond. You've proven God over and over in your life. It's just like forgiveness. Forgiveness isn't an event. It's a conceptual way of living. You just walk through life forgiving. Because if you don't forgive, you torment yourself. But God continually has always absolutely forgiven us of everything, of all shortcomings, of all sin, of all failure. He's forgot. He wipes it away. And we continue living in His forgiveness. So you find strength in adversity. It isn't just an event, it's a way of life. You should know there's ups and downs in life, all of you know that. And God is with you on the up, God's with you on the way down, God's with you when you're with others, God is with you when you're by yourself. Often He will speak when you're by yourself. And so your confidence in God. How about the secret time when you're all alone? Hear God then. How about the bold times when you need to hear God? See, do you know how to get a testimony? By having a test. How do you get a testimony? By having a test. How can you give a testimony of Jesus Christ in your life, the Spirit of God in your life? How do you get a test or a testimony? By having a test and proving that God and His Word are true. No test, no testimony. Count your blessings. And when you find yourself in a test, when there's adversity... A test is an opportunity to grow, opportunity to trust, an opportunity to prove your integrity with God. So you can say, I'm an upright man before God. I'm an upright woman before God. I'm an upright young person before God. Why? Because God is who I live for. God is with me, living, leading me in my life. So you prove your faithfulness. You prove your obedience. You prove your integrity with God. You find strength in adversity. You find God in His will for the moment. And so to know that you are never, ever alone. Never, ever alone. Each test, each testimony is to prove why you're here. You're here to prove the glory of God in your life. God created you. He gave the world. He said, there, it's good. Enjoy God and enjoy life. And let others know when God is with you. And so then you choose your favorite verse to walk with through life. What's your favorite verse today? Wherever you are with God. You know, you choose verses like, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble if you're in adversity. And so you can say, during the adversity, I don't know the outcome. I'm being attacked from all sides. I, I feel like I'm all alone. Da -da 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 -da. But God is my strength and my refuge, a very present help in trouble. I'm looking to God. I'm not looking at the adversity. I'm not looking at my emotions. I'm not looking at the situation as much as I'm looking to God, who's my strength and my present help. Or, do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
you're coming out of adversity and you realize, wait a minute, the joy of the Lord's my strength. We can continue thinking about adversity and how it affected us, or we can realize, wait a minute, God saw me through that. I'm getting out of that. God is my strength. Why? Because I have the joy of the Lord. Or how about another scripture? I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. But here's one to always remember. Jesus himself said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Have you ever been at the end of your rope? <laughs> Have you ever been at the end of your earth? It's like it's all over. It's just, and, and, and we go through, hopefully not many of those, but you know, we go through life or we see somebody else. And you said, wait a minute, I, you tell them, I know how God saw me through. I, here, the, Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. I'm with you now that I'm with you. I'm with you. He's with you after I leave. No, you are never alone. Jesus Christ is with you. So look for the strength in adversity because it's led by God. Love acknowledges strength in adversity. Let's stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Lord God, if people are in adversity right now in their lives, that you would comfort them. That they'd say, wow, God is here. God, thank you, Lord, for helping me. Father, thank you for taking us through adversity in our life. And even though more will come, we thank you ahead of time. Lord, that we don't always have to walk in that. We can walk in the joy of the Lord. We can walk in the love of God. So, Father, I pray blessing upon this church, every person. Let the love overwhelm them. You, God, let love overwhelm them. And all the security and comfort and encouragement, all the conviction, they're living for you because you're there and you're alive. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. I have seen the pace of your life. The stress, the anxiety, the constant movement, rushing from one place to the next, chasing after your desires, or running from your fears. I see how you struggle, striving to meet your needs all on your own. I see the burdens placed upon you and the burdens you place upon yourself. In the midst of this chaos and hurry, I am calling out to you to slow down. Be still and know that I am God. It is I who set the earth in motion. It is I who sustains you, protects you, and provides for your needs. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Trust in me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid, for I will never leave you. Let your soul find rest in me, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. For neither death nor life, the present nor the future, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from my love. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Mark Ammerman, and I want to thank you for being with us today, and I certainly hope you are blessed. I want to invite you to live stream to the pastor's study on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for a short message out of the Word of God. 
where God can lead you, guide you, comfort you, strengthen you in your life at this time. So again, thank you for being here, and I hope to see you Wednesday and Sundays.